you know ready now we'll come to a point now where we'll show you the different parts of the instruments now when this sitar is made is made of pumpkin gourd you can see this is the pumpkin gourd and this when it is dried it is cut into a shape and then you can see the shape from this side and this is known as tumba we come to the next part now here you can see now when you fix the tumba here cut it you have a neck wooden neck you join it together this is one piece of wood this is the back portion you see the rough portion because it is now not finished it is joined together chiseled it comes on top of this when it is joined together you see the shape now see these dot dot this is pins because you cut it bring it into shape and then on the back side of it which is the front side of sita this is not tabli a piece of wood the inside portion is chiseled in such a manner that it looks black but of course it is chiseled in such a manner that this portion the center portion where the bridge rests must be very very scientific must be heavy so that the pressure of the strings is rest on this heavy part we we'll see the next page now the front portion of this after joining you saw the inside portion of front portion now you have a design little bit some people like love the designs so it is a design then from here the neck starts this is the dandi this front portion of the dandi this is the rear portion of the dandi and these are the khuntis very for tuning now then you have a bridge on this a small white you can see there is a tarab and this is the finished product of the dandi with the frets on the sita and this big bridge is known as jawari the life of the sound of the sitar lies on this on the level of this this is an illustration for information and this is the complete sitar you can see and it doesn't have the tumba double tumba in this sitar you have the double tumba small tumba on the upper neck these illustrations we have taken from the book sitar and his technique so written by me but the illustrations are given to give you an idea so that you can see from the sitar and then you know how to uh, make it later on if you want to make it now you come to the actual sitar now you see the frets from here these are frets we call it hindi mein parda itni parde hain then we have a lower set of strings they known as tarab these tarab set of strings were introduced only uh, before 70 80 years not before that before that there is no tarab in the sitar only you had the first upper set so and this is the 
bridge jawari i showed you in the book now you can see now if i place my finger on this you won't have the sound have a closer view now here this is jawari i put my finger on the string you can't see 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 the resonating effect now see is dead effect so this is the bridge and this is the tarab small bridge as i showed you in the photograph and this is the tabli and we will come to the gradual gradually the different parts and names now the frets are here small pegs are here and bigger pegs are there for upper set of strings in the upper set we have seven strings in the lower set we have 12 strings that is to give an idea how a sitar looks and then one point is a very important point today there are various styles of music means music means when i'm talking music i'm talking sita various styles of sita playing each style is good in its own way we cannot say oh that style is not good mine is good and others is bad no each and every style is good we have to respect all the styles like in my sita you see we represent a tradition which has 17 frets if you count it has 17 frets if we see from the up and down see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 in some other gharana styles you have 19 one you have here komalga and komalni we do not have komalga and komalni similarly the string arrangements the traditional string arrangement of sita tuning is first string is ma second string is sa third string is sa then fourth string is pa then fifth string is pa sixth string is sa then last is sa so that is the traditional way of tuning sita i'll repeat again the traditional way of tuning sita first string is ma then sa then again sa then pa then pa then sa chikari then last chikari when you play jhala you play chikari so this is and this is tied you can see how it is tied the back now we are putting these days fishing line machi pakadne ka hota na those things earlier days the muga suta used to be used you know muga thread these days we are using these because it is more durable and it, is, it doesn't get dirt also melani hote hain and see the back which you saw in the book how good it looks and then will come next part will be the name of the next uh, different parts what you call them cut now you see before we start i would like to give you the line the 
family tree of the sitar player of the senior tradition which we have at present from our available resources from masjid sen this guru shishya parampara system goes to his sen son bahadur sen then it goes to his son rahim sen then it goes to his son amrit sen you see all sen tan sen's ka ancestors hai then it goes to the shishya ustad barkatullah khan sahab then for barkatullah khan sahab it goes to his shishya ustad ashik ali khan sahab and then it goes to it goes to his son ustad mushtaq ali khan sahab who is my guru and then it goes on to me so you have seen 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 eight generation of sita players this is a unique history and a fact that in india this is the only traditional gharana which is having this line of sita players two sita players this is what we all should remember when we talk of gharana talk of talk of bangsha parampara talk of guru shishya parampara cut थोड़ा सा सेंटर में लाइए नाउ let us see this is as you know mizrab many of us do not know where is the right place to put on the mizrab whenever you put on a mizrab you can see the mizrab the background of my finger the top must be always on the top you cannot put on the mizrab one day on the top here other day you turn it on the other side then you you can see my finger is formation of callus ye khatam ho jayenge ye khatam ho jayenge you can't put on the mizrab mizrab have must have a grip magar andar zyada nahi hoga bahar bhi zyada nahi hoga kuch log aise bhi pehnte hain bahar le lete hain ise you can see kitne bahar hai to इतना बाहर भी नहीं होना चाहिए ये जो इसका जो टॉप है टॉप शुड नॉट बी दैट ए हेड इट शुड भी इतना सा होना चाहिए ए टिप तो हम पहनते हैं मेजरा देखिए नाइल आई पुट इट ऑन यू सी हाउ इट पुट ऑन प्रेस करके एक तरफ ये एक तरफ नाउ इट इज फर्मली ग्रिप ना ये ज्यादा अंदर भी नहीं है ज्यादा बाहर भी नहीं है सी द एज कैन यू कैन सी द एज कितनी बाहर है बहुत कम है इतनी सी बाहर है और ये भी इतना अंदर नहीं जाएंगे तो मिजराफ पहनना टू फुट ऑन द मिजराफ टू फाइंड आउट अ गुड मिजराफ is a very very important factor of playing sitar if you have a bad mizrab you cannot play you cannot fold your finger like this and then the line line also must be on a place where you have a 
proper lining. If it's too much other than the end of the finger near the nail, then you can't play. So both are so important. Now, how do you hold the sitar? I'll take the first lesson from the right hand. The right hand, you fix your thumb. Once you fix your thumb, it never comes off. If you pull it, you shouldn't take it out. Many people play like this. That's wrong. Because that you play sarod like that. You don't play sita like sarod. So it is fixed here. You see the good players, they'll see all thumbs are fixed here. Now, then you bring in. That's called da. Out is da. So in, out. Many people like play like this, you know. Aise, aise, aise. That's not correct. So all you have to do, bring the finger in, out, in, out, and reproduce a musical sound. Achha, surreali sound hona chahiye. Aisa nahi. Aisa look karte, ye bhi galat hai. Aise bhi karte, aise galat hai. So in, out. When you play in and out, there's no harm if you sound the second string because that is the basis tonic. Sa hume milte hain. Isa. Now without this sa, you cannot play. Otherwise, this could be ma also. I can say this is ma. Sadigama pa. Ma pa dhani sa. Sanida pa ma. But why this is not ma? Because second string gives you the background. So, so sadigama. Then come to the second finger, second uh, string. When you strike the second string, you more normally strike it da. Now come to the left hand now. How do you hold the string? Look at my left hand. Round, thumb up, then bring it on the sitar. Easily. So put your down, hand down. Relax. Bring it up. Then place it on sa. Now when you press it on sa, never stiff. There should not be any stiffness. So don't press too hard. Now let us see where is my thumb now? When I'm holding, I'm holding. You see the thumb? Not like this. See, thumb goes up. So, if I'm pressing my finger on sa, thumb goes up then sa, up then sa, it is closer to the knee. Yaha par thumb aate piche. So, let us see the back. Gradually. See. So, when I'm playing sa, finger is on sa, thumb is on knee. So, not like this. If your finger is on sa, thumb is on sa, then you can't have the flexibility of pulling the string. So later on you have to pull. So, what do you do? This gives you the flexibility. If you do like this, straight, you can't pull. So, look at my finger now. And then when you pull, it should be round. Many people pull it like this, straight. So it has to be round. Knee to sa. You can see the finger. Should look 
like a round you are holding a say something some ball in your hand leave that easily press it and then you will see you have a much much better sound. Now when you have this hand when you play jhala in the right hand come back to the right hand again when you play jhala it is da the hand comes at the end then so da da how do you sit sitting position also is very important you see put your sita on the on this place of feet place it firmly and press it press it with your elbow when you press it with the elbow you must be careful that the elbow should not come in front it should be back and then your finger will move not the wrist you look at me now not like a lot of people make this mistake they move their hand up and down no that's wrong So I played in the first speed, but you see my hand. So da ra. So this is also have to be flexible, easy. You never feel stiffness. You know, whenever you feel stiffness, you know there is something wrong in your playing. So swing one. Two, three, four, and when you now coming to the left hand again, here up. Now when you pull a string, how do you pull? Supposing you're pulling one, two, three, four notes. Say, dha or dha sa. Always use two fingers. Corresponding finger must be on your. previous note so this is dha this is komal dha we are not playing this so dha dhani dha sa now look my look at my finger both the fingers are round if it is not round you don't get a good mean that you have to do and then when you play come down gradually like now when you come to sa use this finger this finger is used always when you return come back so why i am using this because i am coming back from sa Now, if I say na sa re ga, if I say sa re ga ma ga re sa, now ma from ma I am coming back. So what I am doing? O re sa ga re ma ga pa ma. So I'm using this finger when you come back. So use this finger, and these two hands must have the flexibility. And remember once again, this hand comes up slowly and rests on the sitar. Slightly press, not on the fret, above the fret. Then. 
when you pull with one finger see those who have the strength in the finger they can pull with one finger if you don't have the strength you can use two fingers these strings you can always see that the flexibility never stops so that is very much imp important and then you must have one thing very important that when you place a finger and go to the next fret there must be a coordination with the right hand also so right and left let us see together i'm striking now if i am striking here ga and i am playing ma now if the finger goes up and i goes ahead to ma and i strike later on then there there will be no coordination so that is not correct so so ga so there must be a coordination for which you have to practice very hard if you do like this this is wrong so this coordination gives you the perfect sound and then from one note to another note when you go many many players what they do they lift their finger you see what happens here the sound is dead what do you do keep your finger on the fret don't leave when you shift to another fret you stick it this continuity must be there if you do like this that's not correct If I do like this, that is not Indian music. So, you must remember all these technical aspects of playing sita, which is extremely important. You must also remember there are thousand and thousand sita players in this country. But give me one good reason why thousand players are not. enjoyed known why they cannot reach a certain height because of these things on top of everything you must have the aesthetic ability to produce the music mere practice doesn't give you all the license and latitude of playing sita you may strike a note that doesn't give you anything unless you combine all this together bring out music what is music which should please your ear and then when you play classical music it must be within the framework within the rules and then you have a raga what is a raga raga is a combination of various factors which will take up in the next lesson thank you chalo Yeah. India, Pakistan, which was once a part of India. If you talk of Hindustani music, <laughs> now you see the map of India. 
and we come to the Carnatic music which is sung mostly in the southern part of India covers the region of up to Karnataka. This part. And from here Maharashtra starts and then it goes up Gujarat, Pakistan, Afghanistan, come to the north all over, then come to Nepal, Bangladesh, then here Assam, Orissa, Dandakarani, all these parts, you know, then is covered by the North Indian music. So, region wise, of course, we are trying to have a common ground, common point in Delhi. We are planning to have Carnatic Hindustani music together, presenting together, but it is practiced by this region in the Carnatic section and this region because even the film music has influenced a lot. If you see the film music of India, North Indian music, I am talking of Bombay films. Even in the films of South, the tunes are of given from the North Indian music. So, that way there is a very much common and uh, it is spread out. Even you go to Pakistan, Afghanistan, you see people like uh, the North Indian style of music and they practice, they sing Indian film music and this is the geographical position of an existence of our two systems of music. Vedic times. Now, when you go back to that era of Vedic times, we cannot miss the term Gandharvam. We must remember. But Gurino, Gurino. As we said earlier, that this music what we have today, it is an offshoot of our Vedas. And then when you come to the part of Gandharva music, we have to remember what are the components which make this music complete. Number one is Swar, then number two is Tal, number three is Pad. Now these three when you combine together and 
यू हैव योर अटेंशन इन ए कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड मैनर विच इज नोन एज अवधानम स्वर एज यू नो द मीनिंग द टोनल एस्पेक्ट ताल एज यू ऑल नो इंडिकेटिंग द रिदमिक एस्पेक्ट पद मीन्स एम्बॉडिंग द वर्बल एस्पेक्ट वॉट वी सिंग of course in the instant instrumental music this aspect has a new meaning in vocal music pad means where you have the language earth in instrumental music you transform it like with the strokes if you say something in vocal music kabahuna like that you transform this thing into the instrumental technique and that of course represents the beauty lies that in instrumental music the aspect of pad is uh, very much important as it is in vocal music but it is more difficult in instrumental music to define pad so what we do we bring out the essence through the medium of technique <laughs> now we come to the part where in sangeet ratnakar the aspect of this musical aspect is defined and it says that who can adequately extol the importance of music it is verily a means of attaining the accepted fourfold values of human life what are the fourfold values of human life number 1 is dharma meaning the religious or ritualistic and ethical values of life then number 2 uh, earth that is the socio economic values then comes to karma the effective and emotional aspect of life that is we have already studied that already and which includes the aesthetic values of life and moksha finally moksha liberation liberation of what spiritual values of life all this combining we have a an approach to this music in the pursuit of music we have to remember all these things this all embracing pervasiveness of music in the traditional culture values of india can be envisaged in three broadly demarcated areas three because we have to first of all define when you come to the classical part number 1 is folk folk means folk music as you all know what is the number 2 tribal music the say i mean you can include tribal and folk together i would put that way because tribal also comes into the folk category then you come to the next part is the temple music which is related to uh, religion when we had shlokas chanting in the temples we had this temple music and we come to the third part which is being practiced by us today that is a traditional classical now in folk and in temple music you are not bound by any law or rule whereas in classical music you are under binding where you have to follow certain rules 
So these are the three categories where when uh, we talk of music, we have to think of it. Cut. There is a can that means there is a end, you know. Now, as we said about the uh, folk music, temple music, and traditional music, I'll give you an example. It might interest you how we are indebted to our folk tradition, tribal tradition. Many of our classical music, which you hear today, the ragas, are the origin, and much, and many of them are being inspired, many of the ragas are inspired from those folk idioms. For instance, uh, we have taken up these days very commonly a raga called Mand. I'll play you a song and I'll show you how we have taken up the idioms from the folk to the classical. Now let us hear the Mand folk music first. Now, that was a part of the song, not a uh, full song, but now we are playing to the raga part. That was the classical music. We have we have played the classical part of it. You'll see another interesting point. Even this music, we find it has been used in uh, film also. In uh, some of the film music, you'll find this kind of thing. You may identify the song also. How? So, this is a line from it film song. You can see jolly well that uh, how the folk 
music has influenced our classical music. Back. Out of tune, I think. Indian music, we're talking of classical music, of course, now. It comprises into two distinctive styles. Now, the first is the Hindustani system, as you know, and the other one is Carnatic system. Now, we'll now show you the map of India and you'll see that how far the Hindustani system covers the region of India. Of course, we are trying to integrate ourselves with both the systems, but this music is predominantly Hindustani system is practiced in the north and Carnatic system is practiced in south of India. Now you see it in the map, the regions where it covers. Now, these two systems are surviving side by side from ages. But of course, it is, it is a matter of fact that the Carnatic system has the more original ingredients till date compared to Hindustani music system. Because the northern part was, northern part of India was invaded by Mughals, by Persians, by Alexander. So, northern part is very much a kind of a assimilation of various culture and styles. But even that assimilation has its own origin. We have not, not lost our origin and that has survived also. I always uh, say with pride when I go abroad to the foreign audience. Look at the music of the world. Each country has forgotten their own music. Take the case of Japan or take the case of Hungary. Anywhere you go, you see that the music of their own origin is now forgotten. Everywhere you come across Western music. And India was under the British rule for so many years. Still, we have not changed our style. That shows how strong, how powerful it is. Because it is based on a solid rock. So, when you study the music of different nations, you'll see it's a, it has become a history today. I mean, you take the case of our Veena, and side by side, you take the case of uh, Samisen or Kyoto of Japan. People don't play these days. So we have not changed our tradition, not we have forgotten our tradition. And anything which is based on a solid foundation can never be forgotten, never be wiped off. Break.
Ele. In spite of major and minor differences in the contents and delineation as well as in the richness and styles, there is a marked fundamental unity between the Hindustani and Carnatic systems. As Indian music, both the systems have a common origin, a common perspective and a common course of evolution. The fundamental concepts and the basic tenets are common. So there are many things in common. We may have in delineation a difference. The basic concept is common. Thus the melodic structure, meaning a total arrangement based on a succeeding sequence of notes, is common to both and the raga concept is the quintessence of the musical matrix of both. Tala, that is cycle time, time cycle system, is a factor where we have very much in common. But again, while in delineation, there is a difference between the Hindustani and the Carnatic system. So, the Raga and the Tala system, by name it is common, by many, many, I mean, points, it is very much common, but then while delineation, while performance, performing, there are subtle differences. For instance, in Hindustani music, for instance in instrumental music, we play a composition. It could be a composition like this. You know. Now, this is the stroke patterns. Da 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 da. Now, when you go to the Carnatic system, it has to be based on a kriti, on a song. We are not going to talk about uh, those things now. But the point is that in North Indian style, the performer has a freedom, especially the instrumental performer. So, when you perform in Hindustani style, you have much, much liberty than what you have in Carnatic style. Because you cannot change the Kriti in a different way, because it is already said that how it has to be sung or played. Now, what are the common grounds we come across? If you go to the melodic and tonal aspect, then that aspect is very important for a student of music. Say, Nad, Shruti, Swar, Sthan, Vadi, Samvadi, Anuvadi, Vivadi, Varna, Alankar, Gamaka, Sthai, Mind, Khatka, Murki, Ghasit. Khatka, Murki, Mind, Ghasit, Sud, these are all instrumental uh, techniques which are applied. Like Ghasit, like that will come later on when we explain what is the uh, application part of it. Then Krintan, Zamzama, then Mela, which is very commonly used, Mela, Mela Padhati, Thaat, Rag, Anibad. The Anibad term today is used as Alap. In the ancient text you will find the word Anibad Anibad. Anibad is which is not set, Nibad, which is set. So, an alap is not set, 
Then so it is anibad. It's not nibad. And then nibad is, which is set. <coughs> then nibad has another name today in the instrumental context is bandish. Now, in today's context, nibad and bandish has very much in common. Supposing if I am playing a composition, that must be set. Not set to the word, but set to a system of cycle. And when you sing a kriti, that also in Ibad, because that is set to a cycle, not only, not only to a cycle, but also to the text. So we have an advantage here. Like if I am playing in Ibad, in instrumental composition, I can play a composition, say, in Adi Tala, in Karnatic, in Teen Tala, in North Indian music. So in Teen Tal, 16 bits. Let us hear. 16 bit cycle. 1, 2, 3, 4. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, you can observe one thing. Double is being played. Now, for the modern technology, the tune has gone up. It has to be in tune. Tune it now. Yes. Sa. That's it, now. More or less, this higher, more. No, lower, lower. No, up, uh, here. Now play. As you know, this is tabla. Tabla keeps the cycle. And this cycle is a cycle of 16 bits, known as Teen Tal. playing the composition, repeating the same composition and that is set to a tala and this is called a bandish also. Bandish means you are not allowed to go beyond the set pattern. We call it nibad also. That is how we come across. Now the rhythmic aspect when you come to the, we leave aside now melodic aspect and the tonal aspect. Now we come to the rhythmic aspect. In rhythmic aspect, we have le, we have matra, we have bowl, we have avartan, we have tali, khali, and finally the tala system. Le, as you know, le is a division of our regular rhythm. Le can, can be defined also that whether it is slow or which, whether this is fast because Le signifies the speed, Tal signifies the set pattern. So when you talk of Le, we say Jaldi Bajao, Jaldi. Jaldi means fast. And then Acha, slow Bajao, slow. That means slow, means 
dhire that is le now you must know one thing which is fast and which is slow this is a very interesting point have you ever thought of it which one will you will say that this is a slow le and this is a fast le where you define that this is the mark idhar aa jaye to slow ho gaya idhar aa gaye to fast ho gaya so there is a line normally i strongly believe that you see in your nerve you have a bit is going anything below this should be slow this is the middle and any anything above this should be fast so hamari jo nadi hai ye hum middle madh le kahenge isse jo dheere hoga slow kahenge isse jo upar hoga you can feel your pulse now you have to think of it so that is lay now when you have lay then you have we set those things first of all what do you do we have a cycle system jisme taal aate hain in taal we have matras then we have in matras we play bol dha din din dha aur din din bajao zara please dha din din dha dha tin tin ta din din dha now when you play dha see play dha only with both the hands na kat you see the difference of the sound te 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 re ke te ta ka ta ka thun ka ta ga di ge ne dha kata ga di ge ne dha dha tu na kat dha tu na kat te te kata te te kata ga di ge ne dha te dha एक साथ बजाओ प्ले स्लोली आई एल रिपीट अगेन ते टेकता गदी गिने धा ति धा थुन थुन ना 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 कत कति टे धा घेंता धा धा धिन धिन धा धिन्ना धिन धिन्ना तिन्ना धिन धिन्ना द साइकिल ऑफ टेन बिट्स नोन एज झपताल ना झपताल लेटस हियर नाउ प्ले गेन सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव धिन्ना धिन धिन्ना Tin na, din din na. Now this is cycle of ten. Let us hear a cycle of seven. Tin tin na, din na, din na. Tin tin na. Now a cycle of Twelve bits known as ekhtal. Din din dhage tere kete tu na katta dhage tere kete di na. Din din dhage tere kete tu na katta dhage tere kete di na. Now a cycle of sixteen bits. Four 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 four. कैसे जाते हैं दिन दिन दा दा दिन अगेन दिन 
धा दिन दिन धा दिन दिन धा ता दिन दिन ता ता दिन दिन धा दिन दिन धा Now we are not going to go in detail but remember any first beat of any taal is known as sum pehli beat pehli matra pehli matra pehli anything starting point is known as sum hum jaise if i start like say teen taal धा दिन दिन धा धा दिन दिन धा तिन तिन ता ता दिन वन लेट सम फाइव नाइन थर्टीन वन सिर्फ सो वन इज यू कैन हियर द साउंड वन लेट सम हियर द साउंड ओनली नाउ नाउ वील नॉट सी द तबला नाउ Purposely, we will not see the tabla. Why? You have to get used to the sound. When you are playing, you are teaching your students. You tell them to have the sound in their ear. Now you have to tell me where is one, where is nine, one, nine, sum, khali. सम खाली दा दिन दिन दा दा दिन दिन दा दा तिन तिन ता ता दिन वन नाउ विल चेंज द प्लेस ऑफ वन नाउ यू टेल द स्टूडेंट टू फाइंड आउट वेयर इज वन वेयर इज नाइन Now change it now. Now I have to find out where is one. We all will not show the tabla now. You won't see the tabla now. Because tabla, if you see, you will know where is the ball. So you tell me where is one? Where is nine? I'll give you the cue. One, nine. Now we are changing again. Change the sum. Now tell me where is one? Simple. So one. So you got to know now what is needed when you perform. You have to have the sound in your mind. That sound, because when you play, you don't look at the tabla player. Hear the sound. One, nine. I'm not looking at the tabla player, but I know. Now I'll ask him to change. Now please change. change the sum change the cycle uh uh plain taker cut change karne ka matlab samajhte nahi kya ek ko jo no kar do na are oh theka kyun change kar rahe ho theka to band kar deta hu no theka band change karo We'll say change from change. We'll take change. We'll take. Hmm. Hmm. Let's go. Ha ha. We'll keep paying. We'll be still. Change. Good. Now tell me where is one. Nine.
So, one. Now we'll change again. Did you find out where is one? It's gone. One. Change again. One. Change again. So you have to find out one, five, nine, thirteen. We are changing the first beat again. So you have to pick up from the sound, not looking at the tabla, but hear the sound. Change. Now you have to tell me where is one. So this is the practice, what we all should do all the time. Now, after the rhythmic aspect, we come to the compositional forms. That is the, the triad of rag, tal, and prabandh. And that is the bedrock of Indian music. As you know, prabandh, we already said nibandh is also prabandh, part of it. So, many of you know the, the, know the uh, definition of prabandh also. So, pradhatu, bandh. So, prabandh. Tal and Rag, combining these, you have these compositional forms. Now, in vocal music, when you come to the vocal music, what are the forms known as? In group one, Dhrupad and Dhamar, which is the richest form of our classical heritage. Then you come to Khayal, we already said about it. And this is the complex which has an implicit commitment to the maintaining unfolding of the raga form. Then group two comes to Thumri Dadra variety as we told you. And gradually it comes to Kajri, Tappa, the lighter part of it. Then we have to understand that there are various classifications of instrumental music. What are the various classifications? Now, we come to the next stage. Now, let us come to the classification part of our musical instruments. First, we must know that the instruments are classified. It is only available in our Shastras. Nowhere in the world you can, you can find out that classification. Like Tat Badi, instruments. And in that, plucked and bowed. Tat and Bitat. So, say plak plak me. What you do? Ham log jab bajate tambure. We also plak the string. Playing sitar, plucking, plucking in the stroke. Then we have veena, plucking instrument. Then we have bowing instruments like we have sarangi. Then we have like, uh, you know, Dilruba or Israj. Of course, Dilruba and Israj is going to be extinct now these days. But they are one of the very, very popular instruments. I mean, if I may say so, Sarangi is going to be also an extinct. After a few years, I wonder whether we'll have this much a popularity of Sarangi as we have. Then we come to the second classification known as Shushire Vadya, wind instrument. You know wind instrument, you know flute, I mean anything which you blow, Shahnai, Nadaswaram, you can take all these in the Shushir Vadya. 
then we have come to avanadvadya we have the greatest example in north india tabla pakhavaj then in kannada music we have uh, mridangam ghatam all those things even in north india we have dholak nal all these come into the percussion category called avanad vadya and then solid instruments as comes the last category and that's known as ghana vadya like you know khartal cymbal jhaan jisko hum kehte hain striking both the place you know heavy place you strike a sound these are the four classification of instruments we will come now next part of our lecture would be that the plucked instrument in particular reference to sitar now we will now next few lectures will devote the lectures on sitar only because we had the background of the music of india classification of instruments now we are coming to the subject seta cut now do you want me to go there one shot now or later on ha uh, ready सितार में ऐसे कहने फ्रंट शॉट जो लेंगे पहले सितार का शॉट लेंगे हम ऐसे पूरा सितार का दिखा देते हैं जन ही कम नहीं कैमरा नीचे से ऊपर ले जाए ना ऐसे इसमें घुमाए इसको ऐसे कौन सा कैमरा ये ले रहे आप ठीक ना देखिए सही है ना यहाँ आप लीजिए ऊपर करिए ऊपर ले जाइए धीरे धीरे बस ये ऊपर से नीचे ले आइए आप यहीं रखिए कैमरा और धीरे धीरे एक एक पर्दे ना धीरे धीरे करते करते आइए रेडी हाँ नाउ लेट एस सी द व्यू ऑफ द सितार फ्रॉम अ क्लोज रेंज नाउ Now you see, this is a development, and through the process of evolution, we have come to this shape today. The shape which you see today, you can see the tumba, the back portion, made of palm pumpkin gourd. then you have a bridge then tarab then all different parts parde hai then you see these khooties tarab for tuning the tarab thing the main khooties for tuning the main strings we'll come to the different 
parts of the sita gradually but let us uh, look back a little bit now during the last days of mughal empire the sitar was developed sitar se pehle as you know that everyone is to play veena and this instrument according to some scholars was known previously as jantar some used to call this jantar and some used to call popularly it was known as tritantri veena and tritantri veena i must tell you one thing that any stringed instrument in our indian music was known as veena chahe ek tar ho chahe teen tar ho chahe 100 100 tar ho means beat one string beat three string beat 100 string all instruments were known by the name of veena for instance you might have seen the folk singers like in a folk singers in bengal baul they sing with one string instrument they call it ek tara it was named earlier also as ekatantri veena then two string instruments known as the tantri veena three string instruments so three tantri veena even today you come across an instrument called santur and it was said that uh, it had 100 strings so it was known as shat tantri veena any string instrument was known as veena so many many scholars books have uh, written in the book that it was an instrument which was invented by amir khusro came from persia is not true it did exist in india in a different shape in a different name if you go to uh, if you go to the caves of ajanta elora you'll see there frescoes on the wall ud rabab all those veenas you have those frescoes and also in sculptures also if you go to the museum you see many sculptures holding the veena rudra veena rabab so sitar is a development of this kind of process of evolution now during the 18th to 20th century this instrument slowly became popular and the students of music started learning and practice it more and more moreover another style of singing was evolved which is named as khayal as a parallel to dhrupad as i told you earlier that dhrupad was the original and to make it easier khayal was invented and as you know i said earlier veena was sometimes was being played as an accompanying instrument with the dhrupad but sitar was never used as an accompanying instrument so the name sitar how we came today to have this name in persian word same is three tar means strings and persian great persian poet composer creator innovator amir khusro gave a name to this instrument and he gave a new life to this instrument in fact in the late 18th century it was uh, becoming very very popular then in the early 19th century it was extremely popular but like khayal singing and its tradition sitaris also made their own style of playing which is called 
as baj and today you will see many many of the uh, musicians uh, attribute themselves link themselves with tansen the father of indian music because tansen was not a uh, sitar player he was a drupad singer but then from his line you can uh, see like from masid sen we'll come to the genealogical tree shijra jisko kehte hain ki that there you'll see that the origin of sitar how sitar came into being and from here we go where we get a really real style like today we play masjid khani gat masjid khani gat was originated by masjid khan who was an ancestor of khan sen now you may say why masjid khan was not called as masjid sen so that was a tradition from khan sen although they belong to senia gharana but they all used to call themselves mm, masjid from sen to change to masjid khan earlier they were called as masjid sen bahadur sen amrit sen so amrit sen was still continued but masjid sen in the name of masjid can we have masjid khani style baj that's where the term calls called baj baj means style so we have this style and then masjid khan is to play the slow style and raza khan is to play the faster movement belambit and drut so masjid khan never played the drut style and he was never given the name for uh, inventing the drut style so masjid khan is still today alive in our music in his compositions which is slow and that is known as we call it dedi da dedi da ra da da ra these strokes must have in masjid khani gat and then in raza khani we must have these strokes da dere 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 da re da re da and this stroke must have in raza khani means faster compositions stop